Hello, Karen Gosling here. This week on Emotion Matters TV I'm talking about panic disorder and specifically the symptoms of a person suffering a panic disorder. Panic attacks are surprisingly common. Up to 40% of the population will experience a panic attack at some time in their life. So chances are it may happen to you or someone close to you. It's best to know what panic is all about. In this video I discuss the symptoms of a person suffering a panic disorder, which is the term used to describe someone who has suffered a series of panic attacks or who's had one and is fearful of having another. A person who's had a panic attack and then suffers significant changes in behaviour as a result, for example, you know, avoids doing exercise because it might increase the heart rate, can also be said to be suffering the disorder. Panic attacks are surprisingly common. Up to 40% of the population will experience a panic attack at some time in their life. Some of the common signs and symptoms of a panic attack include uh, a sense of overwhelming panic or fear, the thought that you might be dying or choking or losing control or going mad. Another symptom is increased heart rate. You may also have difficulty breathing and that means sort of feeling that there's not enough air to, to gasp in. Your legs often feel wobbly and jelly-like, as if they cannot hold you up. Most people experience excessive perspiration and sweating, um, and you may also have dizziness, lightheadedness, or feeling faint. During a panic attack, an individual is suddenly overwhelmed by the physical sensations described above, and, and particularly the feeling of of dying. It's a, often a real fear of dying. People, all, people experiencing a panic attack may also experience a derealization, which is a sense that you or the world around you is not real. This symptom is thought to be associated with the physiological changes that occur in the body and the brain during the anxiety response. Panic attacks reach a peak within about 10 minutes and can last for up to half an hour or so, leaving the person feeling tired or exhausted. They can occur several times a day or may happen only once every few years. They can even occur while people are asleep um, and it wakes them up during the attack. Many people experience a panic attack once or twice in their lives and this is common and not considered a panic disorder. I am one such person having suffered two panic attacks in my adult life, neither related to anything in particular. The first actually woke me from sleep and I was so convinced that I was having a heart attack that I went to the doctor the following morning to have an ECG and <laughs> there was no heart attack detected. My second was in front of a group of students while I was giving a lecture. Just short of collapse, you know, those jelly legs that I spoke of, I excused myself from the room and went to the washroom to rest and to dash cold water um, over my face and head, which had become hot and pounding. My heart was racing and again I thought I would die. I didn't, but I also knew I didn't ever want to experience a panic attack again, so I decided to learn whatever I could about them. Counselling can help you too cope with a panic attack so that it does not develop into a disorder. CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, is considered the best therapy with or without the use of medication as understanding what happens to your body when you experience a panic attack is the best means of management if ever it happens. Fear of your physical symptoms seems to perpetuate the disorder and avoidance of certain places or events for fear of having another attack is called a phobia. So, as, as well as learning more about this particular topic, take a moment to browse through the counselling issues on my website at karengosling.com. If you feel that you would benefit from an emotional health counselling and education session, I can assist you with face-to-face -face counselling or if it suits you better, telephone or Skype counselling. Now these days with our wonderful technologies, you can have a counselling session without even living in the same city as the counsellor. Um, or without even leaving the comfort of your own home. If you do set up a Skype session, it's, it's really a case of just working out the time difference and arranging a time with me where we can both talk. 
I live on the Gold Coast in Australia and I'm currently counselling people as far away as uh, Hong Kong, the UK, United States, Singapore, Monaco, so I'm quite sure that we're going to be able to work out a suitable time. Go to my website at karengosling.com to find out more about me and my counselling fees and fill in my contact page to make an appointment. I would feel privileged to be able to help you and I look forward to your contact.